Bianca Sensori, the wife of Kanye West, has spoken out regarding the lawsuit allegations that accuse her of exposing minors to pornography. Greetings, everyone. Today's video focuses on the denial of allegations made against Bianca Sensori, wife of Kanye West, regarding the exposure of minors to pornography in a lawsuit. Milo Yiannopoulos, former chief of staff, strongly denies these claims, asserting that they are both untrue and malicious. The lawsuit also includes accusations of West creating a racially discriminatory workplace and neglecting to compensate employees. The plaintiffs, including individuals under the age of 18, are seeking unpaid wages, damages and attorney fees. At present, West has not provided any comment regarding the lawsuit. Now, without further delay, let us proceed with our discussion. In a recent lawsuit, Kanye West and his wife Bianca Sensori have been accused of both racism and exposing minors to pornography. However, Sensori has now come forward to dispute these claims and assert her innocence. In a statement provided to Hip Hop DX on Tuesday, July 2nd, Milo Yiannopoulos, who previously served as West's chief of staff, vehemently denied the allegations made in the filing. Yiannopoulos emphasized that Bianca, West's authorized representative, has made it clear that any claim suggesting she exposed minors to pornographic material is offensive, repulsive, and entirely untrue. Furthermore, he dismissed the individual responsible for these false accusations, Shamar da Costa, as an attention-seeking individual with no access to West, his family, Yeezy, or any company-related information, both now and in the future. Referred to as Hotep Susan within Yeezy communities due to his exaggerated and nonsensical race-related provocations, da Costa fabricated an entire employment background at Yeezy on his LinkedIn profile, a deceitful and desperate falsehood of epic proportions. He audaciously asserted that he held a prominent role as a lead developer at Yeezy, despite never having been employed by the company. Let me be unequivocal. It is highly unlikely that he will ever secure a position at the company after spreading such repugnant falsehoods about the esteemed figurehead. He went on to say, It is absolutely impossible for da Costa's absurd assertion that minors were exposed to Yeezy porn to be true, because Yeezy porn simply does not exist. I took personal responsibility for this by resigning from my position. Ever since then, my main focus has been ensuring that these app developers receive their due compensation, as evidenced by the extensive correspondence. Anyone who claims otherwise, including certain members of the media, are either lazy or intentionally spreading false information from a lawsuit that is more fantastical than the Lord of the Rings. The opposing team simply outworked you, so there's no need to conjure up the existence of secret white chat rooms. As for a hostile working environment, that claim doesn't hold water since you were never even hired. And let's not even entertain the notion of miners working illegally. It's laughable. The only ones being exploited here are the unfortunate individuals roped into this baseless lawsuit, completely unaware that their names have been associated with a web of falsehoods. If anyone is truly taking advantage of young individuals, it's Shema da Costa and his incompetent Instagram lawyer, Ben Lockyer. It seems Lockyer specializes in gullible African-Americans with questionable legal claims. Both of them should be deeply ashamed, and if they're not now, they will be soon enough. In order to highlight his perspective on the lawsuit, Yiannopoulos showcased three tweets from individuals employed at West's company who expressed agreement with his assertion that he has been focused on ensuring app developers receive proper compensation since parting ways with Kanye. The Washington Post reports that Kanye is currently facing legal action from eight former Yeezy employees who were involved in the development of YZV's N a streaming service intended to feature his upcoming album collaboration with Thai Dollar Dollar Egyen Vultures 2. According to the lawsuit, both the rap legend and Milo allegedly fostered a hostile work environment with racist undertones and harsh conditions, and reneged on their promise to compensate multiple staff members. Several individuals have come forward, alleging that they too experienced instances of racism, sexism and homophobia, during their remote interactions on platforms such as Discord, with derogatory terms like slaves and new slaves being used to refer to them. According to the complaint, black team members were subjected to racial slurs, while only their white counterparts were guaranteed developer positions at Yeezy. 
In addition to being minors as young as 14, the plaintiffs also assert that they were subjected to explicit material, allegedly shared by Bianca Sensori, who is not listed as a defendant in the legal action, through a file-sharing link that featured graphic sexual content. Earlier this year, Kanye made headlines when he revealed his plans to launch a Yeezy porn brand, but it seems that he has since decided to cancel the project. According to the lawsuit, there were no measures taken to protect the underage Yzivsen workers from participating in Yeezy porn or from being subjected to and coerced into viewing explicit content as part of their job duties. The plaintiffs are pursuing compensation for wages that have not been received in addition to attorney fees and are also seeking reparation for the emotional anguish caused. Yeah has refrained from providing any statement regarding the legal action, while Yiannopoulos promptly refuted the accusations on X, formerly Twitter, once reports of the lawsuit surfaced. In a recent lawsuit, a dissatisfied and highly unskilled black developer, whom I have humorously dubbed Hotep Susan, has made an appearance. This individual is upset about not being selected for a full-time position at Yeezy. However, it is worth questioning why he even needed such a job, considering his track record of fabricating employment history, including falsely claiming to have held roles at Yeezy. Tomorrow I will thoroughly dismantle his complaint, addressing each line on camera, including his absurd accusations of racism. Without a doubt, this submission to the court is the epitome of deceitfulness, surpassing even the most dishonest actions I have witnessed during my 10 years of working for billionaires and megastars. The individual in question lacks the authority and does not speak on behalf of the apps that were acquired. I implore you to read it for yourself and witness yet another attempt to exploit racial tensions. As for me, Susan, I firmly reject this proposal, refusing to contribute even a single penny. In response to the accusations regarding pornography, he further stated, every contributor to both closed and open source projects has provided signed releases and contractor agreements, ensuring compliance with legal requirements, including obtaining consent from parents or guardians when necessary. It is important to note that Yeezy Porn is non-existent and therefore could not have been presented to anyone. These allegations are simply absurd. To support our channel's growth and ensure broader awareness, kindly hit the like, share and subscribe buttons. This will help us reach more individuals and disseminate valuable information. Thank you in advance.